Well, to uh, begin, and uh, I want to uh, finish up what we uh, were talking about last time. We, we came to the end, in a sense, of the liturgy of the Word, uh, but uh, I felt that before we move on to the uh, liturgy of the Eucharist, uh, we would take a look at the uh, former Maronite Missal, and see what what had happened there. And uh, as I mentioned to you, in the appendices of the book, the liturgy book that I'm using, uh, I give a, a separate appendix describing how the Maronite service of the word uh, uh, began to uh, become quite multiplied in its uh, gestures and prayers. And so, uh, again, uh, this is something that you can read through yourself uh, as to what happened between the 9th and the 12th century. And again, these are based on uh, manuscripts and the uh, research that was done by the uh, uh, Archbishop uh, Butrus Jamayo. Uh, also, there's an appendix, uh, uh, there's also a section after his uh, history of the uh, development on page 92 uh, about the, uh, the Mar Maronite manuscripts that he was uh, working from and uh, how the development is manifested there. So you could read that, but what I thought we would do before we move on is to take a look at uh, what the uh, missal uh, of uh, uh, the, the standard missal that was in place uh, from uh, 1900 uh, until we got to uh, 1992. And uh, so uh, I... We have an English translation of that that I handed out uh, to you last time. Uh, so if you want to look at the, uh, the handout, uh, you'll note here uh, on page one uh, that the, uh, the first thing that we note here, beginning at the middle part of the page into page two, is a, uh, an opening hymn uh, that... Everybody chanted forever, Sabihul Rab Yajamiya Shaub. And uh, so this was the opening hymn, which again we can understand. Uh, then on, on page two, you'll note uh, the, the priest comes out and approaches the altar. Uh, and keep in mind, we're talking about the old architecture of the church, where the altar was, was facing east and against the wall. And so the priest would go up to the altar itself, uh, with his back to the people, and he would say the, the approach, uh, I come to the altar of God, and so forth. Uh, but then we have what I would call the, uh, the, the rite of preparation of the gifts. So please keep in mind, uh, as I mentioned several times now, basically we normally talk about the rite of Scripture, uh, the, the Liturgy of the Word, and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. But basically, there's several steps. Uh, certainly, this is manifested in the Old Missal. Uh, I would call it the, the rite of the preparing of the gifts. Uh, then you have the rite of purification, which uh, we see with the Hesoyo. And then you have the rite of Scripture readings. So we have several stages. So in the o original Missal, we had this rite of the preparation of the gifts. And uh, uh, the, uh, I, here, of course, all of this is taking place at the altar. Uh, and as we already uh, read and studied, uh, in the Maronite tradition, probably by the time you get to the 10th, 11th century, the gifts were already placed on the altar. Uh, so, uh, so what happens here, and I don't know if you can read the rubrics, but they're pretty faint because they're in red and my, I don't, I'm uh, using a, uh, a color uh, printer. Uh, but it was an interesting rite where the, the celebrant would take the chalice in one hand and the patent in the other. Uh, well, this is after he imposed incense, the uh, server standing at the e end of the altar, and he would take the chalice and put it over the incense and then take the patent and cover uh, the chalice and bring it to the altar. Uh, and so it was uh, an attempt in a way to, uh, to purify the chalice and the patent. 
In the meantime, the host was already sitting on the corporal at the altar. So, uh, but you'll notice here at the bottom of uh, page two, uh, the priest is uh, praying over the, uh, uh, the host and uh, he's already giving, uh, it's not just, you know, like a lamb led to the slaughter, but it's actually a kind of an offertory prayer. So as I mentioned before, uh, because the gifts in the old missal were already at the altar and the congregation was all believers, you had already uh, an attempt at an offertory prayer even in preparing the gifts. So he offers this prayer on page two into page three. And then uh, he, uh, he uncovers the, uh, the chalice and uh, puts the host on the patent. And uh, then he takes the chalice and he pours wine and water. And there is a prayer for each of these, as you'll notice in the middle of page three, uh, similar to the prayer we now use uh, in our own preparation. And then he moves, if you go to the, uh, near the bottom of page three, he says, I place the chalice of salvation upon the holy altar. Uh, and again, it's more of an offertory kind of prayer. Um, and finally, he covers the chalice and the paten with the chalice veil. So, uh, so you have this whole separate rite that took place. And again, it would take at least five minutes or more for it to take place. Then, on page four, you have the priest stepping away from the altar and offering this uh, prayer, uh, Lord, make me worthy, and so forth, which, as we mentioned before, uh, appears in the, uh, the second edition of the Missal, printed edition, and it imitates the Latin confidior, uh, I confess to Almighty God. So he offers this uh, prayer, and then, again, uh, ascends to the altar. So you have your second approach to the altar. Then he pours incense, and incense is the altar and the people. And here you have at the bottom of page four, ikta uh, yevadit uh, So, uh, so you have this, yeah. Uh, so. I, I, I noticed in this prayer, and if we read the Syriac of this book, uh, they, they have prayers where the priest implicitly, implicitly says, I'm a sinner, and accept me, Lord, since I'm a sinner. Last year, we attended a liturgy at uh, Orthodox, Syriac Orthodox, and the priest asks for forgiveness and reminds the people that he's also a sinner. So why, do you have any idea why? That doesn't appear in Arabic or in English. You mean in the current missile? Yeah. Well, they shifted all that to the sacristy. They don't have it here. They, yeah, as I said, they don't have this uh, whole series of preparing the gifts. Uh, all of that is out. Okay. Uh, but the, uh, but as far as this uh, prayer of the priest about his own uh, sinfulness, it it appears. In the old missal, sure it appeared, but if you look at all the various Eastern churches, they have the priest is doing that all the time, yeah. declaring his unworthiness. Uh, but now, as you're, you're right, it doesn't appear in the public liturgy itself as such. Okay. So uh, then you have the incensing of the people. And please note here on page five, uh, this is where... <laughs> Our present missile begins. <laughs> uh, he, he starts with the doxology, peace be with the church, and you have glory to God in the highest. And the old glory to God in the highest, which uh, has all these other snippets of uh, scripture passages. So you have a very long, uh, you know, al Mejdu, a glory to God, that's chanted. Then, after that, you have a hasoyo. Uh, the priest himself doing it. Uh, so he has a premium here on the bottom of page uh, five, the cedro at the top of page six. Uh, and then the, the people uh, come in with a kind of a colo, and that was where the people normally uh, chanted salatikimana. 
Uh, and so you have this, this whole uh, chant of the people. And then after that, the priest again uh, goes through a formal offertory. And so you see this at the bottom of page eight, uh, pardon me, of page six, uh, into page seven. And uh, he also prays for the various classes, uh, the living, the sick, the deceased. Uh, and then he, again, as you, as you noted here near the bottom of page seven, he's, he's praying that he, that uh, again, that have mercy on me, uh, where he strikes his breast three times. Uh, and then, of course, there's more commemorations that take place. Uh, so he goes through this, this whole uh, series of, of, of offertory prayers and commemorations. So you not only have, as I say, the offertory prayers, but a whole set of intercessions uh, that take place in the liturgy of the Word. Monsignor, yeah. remind me what year this was? This is the missile that was official until... Uh, the new one that came out in 1992. This was the. So this is not the, those multicolored books where we had a different one for every season. That came after this. Or yeah. We had yeah. Like a gold yeah. Book yeah. No, the, those those books the those books uh, were used here in the U.S. Uh, but I'm talking about the the official missile. This is the official. This was part of the official missile. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, as, as an English translation. Uh, so after he goes through all of that. Then you have Psalm 51. And so another insensation. So please note now, we're on the third insensation. Uh, the, the, uh, the incensing when he purified the chalice and the patent, the incensing of the people at the Ekbel, and now the incensing again at Psalm 51. And so uh, while th that is being chanted, he's incensing the people. Now, after Psalm 51 is over, then we go into, uh, on page 9, the Aframiyet. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned uh, a couple times now, the Aframiyet were really another Hosoyo done in, in a poetic form. And, uh, you know, depending on the, uh, on the feast of the day, as you note here on page 8, you have one for our Lord. Uh, near the bottom of page 8 and the page 9, the one for the Blessed Mother, and at the bottom of page 10 into 11 for the deceased. Uh, so please note, we, we've had a whole range of offertory players. We've had now really two uh, hisoyos uh, all taking place until here on page 11, in the middle of the page, we get to the Trisagion. Did he choose one of them? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you just choose one. Okay. And uh, as we mentioned last time, there's many more than these three, but these three were in the missile. Okay. Uh, and they're the ones that were, that were used most of the time. But they're, so, uh, so the point I'm trying to make and what Jamayo points out is all these things were added as we went through the centuries, from the ninth century to the 16th. Uh, and so, uh, what the, the issue then is, and this is, we find this in other Eastern churches, uh, redundancy, uh, multiplication. And it's very normal, I guess, in the progress of liturgies that this happens. So, uh, when they finally came out with the new Missal of 1992, you can understand what a radical change that was. Uh, in a sense, you know, the liturgy of the word took probably more than a half hour to go through. And now you're down to 20 minutes or so. Uh, and so, uh, so, but the, the, uh, the Maronite church did it. Uh, the Byzantine churches have not. And most of the other Eastern churches have not. So in a sense, uh, you know, uh, we... If you, from a liturgical point of view, we're ahead of the game. Uh, uh, we've streamlined the, the liturgy, but streamlined in the, in the sense that we went back to our original form. So uh, not everything that old is bad. <laughs>
we went back to the form of the 4th, 5th, 6th century uh, in our liturgy. Uh, the only thing is, you know, when you're doing stuff like that, is that you throw out the baby with the bathwater. In other words, that you, cl that you cut too much, that you take too much out. Uh, and also, the thing that bothers me, as I've told you before, is why cut into the prayers themselves? And why, you know, uh, reduce the prayers, uh, uh, you know, uh, and take out much of the richness and the poetry and so forth. So that, that's a question we'll keep talking about as we go through the rest of the year. But uh, anyway, this is what happened with the reform. Uh, and so, uh, but on the other hand, when a liturgy becomes redundant, people get confused. And they're not sure where they are in a liturgy anymore. See, if, if we celebrated this liturgy tomorrow, which I'm sure some of you would like to, uh, I, you would probably be saying, well, whoa, what's, what's going on here, you know? Uh, and so, uh, uh, so uh, redundancy doesn't mean it, it's better. It just means that it might tire people out. Uh, or, they, or you might uh, give too much priority to one theme and re reduce the priority of the other and so forth. So any questions, comments about that? Yes, sir. You said we cut into the prayers. Do we have, so for example, for Hosoyo, do we have reference to compare to? Or oh, sure. <laughs> if, because, uh, because I remember yeah. last time we were speaking, we don't have the original Syriac text of most of these. Uh, no, what, what I mean here is you can just even go back to the old Missal and find out that some of the Hisoyos uh, have been changed. Uh, you know, uh, and we'll see that also in the, in the anaphoras, which I, again, bothers me tremendously. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, so, uh, th that's my main criticism <clears throat> of the last two missiles, that they, uh, with the idea of streamlining, making the liturgy move faster or whatever, uh, you've lost some of the richness. Uh, you know, for example, uh, we'll get to some of that, uh, even in the, uh, the prayer of praise and thanksgiving, where, where the prayer originally might have had maybe a, a whole page of the heavenly uh, creation of God, you're down to four lines, you know, well, what happened to the rest, you know, so, uh, uh, so yeah, it, uh, we, I'm just comparing it with what we had at the old missal, and not the, uh, the other thing. Sure. Uh, I honestly haven't seen in Lebanon a book that dates before the 1992. That's official. That has the stamp. Do you have any idea of such a book? You, you might have some here in the seminary. Uh, the um, uh, I don't know, but there might be a couple of missiles around. I'm just I'm yeah. just checking because what we've done after in this we've translated the Arabic. Right, and I know there have been many yeah. objections, even for the Arabic version. Right. So I'm I'm wondering where, what did they have to work with? Was this originally Arabic and translated into English, or you mean the present? Uh, the blue book was the blue book. Uh, the blue book. Uh, that was just uh, really taking, I think, the Crimist uh, missile, okay. uh, and, and and translating it, translating it. It wasn't. Uh, uh, that was an American product. <clears throat> no. Yeah. But the, uh, we should have, uh, in fact, most of the parishes here should still have some of those old books in the library or in the sacristy. But of course, some priests, when they come in, they throw everything out. Uh, the, uh, uh, you but mean the three books? I'm talking about the original missal of, uh, in uh, uh, you know, oh. 1905 or something. Oh, okay. yeah. <clears throat> the one yeah. 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 Anything else? I thought I saw How long a hand. did they use that one? From was it from nineteen oh five? Well, as I say, the Crimus missile came out with never was official. Came out in the fifties, I believe. Uh, so it was really the official missile until uh, nineteen ninety two. But from starting from what time? Nineteen oh five. Okay, and what was? What about before that? Do we have? There were other missiles there? before that. I mean, they, they didn't change that much, but. Uh, I mean, once the missiles were printed, they didn't change that much. And so this is all in English here, but was this liturgy, what, 
Was it sometimes in Arabic, sometimes in English? Was Most of it was, and the, the missile, uh, the 1905 missile was in Syriac and Karshuni. Oh, so uh, there was no Arabic at all. So the whole liturgy would have been celebrated in? Exactly. Oh. Yes, I can tell you about it when I was ordained. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it was uh, quite a challenge for an American born. Uh, and uh, so it, uh, it was all, the, I mean, the idea of having ling English in the liturgy wasn't even thought about. Wow. I mean, as far as the, the missile. Now, the scripture readings were done in Arabic and English, but uh, in the liturgy, uh, when I was ordained for the first uh, five years or so, uh, the missile I used was uh, Syriac and uh, Karshuni. And that's up until 1992? I'm sorry? That's up until 1992? No, uh, what happened here is we in the U.S. did our own thing. <laughs> we went to English. Uh, okay. now, what was the main language? English, uh, sorry, uh, Arabic or Syriac? Or both of were used? And the missile... Uh, no, no, the one is spoken. The missile is Garshoni, which is this, yeah. uh, Arabic and using Syriac uh, right. letters. But what did the priest choose? Which language did, you, did the priest choose? Arabic or Syriac or both? When you say, what did he use? I don't mean what you... I don't know what you when, mean. He, when he prayed it. That's a, well, he prayed what was there. If it's Arabic, if it's a Karshuni, he, he did the Karshuni. If it's Syriac, he did the Syriac. Okay. I mean, that's what you did. I mean, same thing with the office. The office was all in Syriac. It wasn't even in Karshuni. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and so uh, that's the way it was. So we've gone through purgatory. Now we've got that <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, if I were if I were being a, a little too immature, I'd be saying you guys don't know how hard it was. <laughs> You're spoiled. <laughs> they didn't have a great Syriac instructor, you know, back in those days as they do today. Not at all. No, uh, no, <laughs> no. That, that was a, a great uh, flaw when I was rector here. That uh, I didn't have the great resource you fellows have. Mm -hmm. Anything else about that? Okay, now we want to move on to uh, the second half of the liturgy, if I can put it that way. We, as I say, we call it the liturgy of the Eucharist. But here again, as you'll see, there are several parts. Uh, one part, you know, we refer to as the pre anaphora. Uh, the uh, then you have the uh, the uh, the whole uh, section uh, that has to do, as I mentioned before, with the consecration, the sacrifice part. And then you have the communion part. Then you have the post-communion. So uh, you have several stages. Uh, the pre-anaphora, the anaphora, the post-communion. Uh, these are all different parts with different meanings to them. Now, uh, here on chapter 4, finally, of your liturgy book, uh, I start off by pointing out what sources we use in order to understand how the liturgy of the Eucharist takes form. And I cite here four different sources on page 39. Uh, the, uh, the lectures, the, the, uh, in a way, uh, that uh, St. Cyril of Jerusalem wrote that about uh, explaining how the liturgy is celebrated in Jerusalem. Uh, the uh, catechetical writings of Theodore Mopsuestia, uh, the apostolic constitution, and uh, the writings of John Chrysostom before he went to Constantinople. Uh, so those are the four that, uh, uh, that are used to give us an understanding of how the liturgy of the Eucharist uh, is structured. Now, the interesting thing about the liturgy of the Eucharist is once you see the basic format, there hasn't been a lot of changes. Uh, so, uh, the ba certainly for the churches of the East, uh, the basic format, except for Sharar, uh, is there from the beginning. And so, uh, 
but we can use these different sources to understand why we have the stages and the prayers that we have. So uh, that's why, uh, you know, it's important to take note of that. Now, you'll note here on page 40, uh, I talk about uh, the pre and after. Now, here is the issue to keep in mind. As we said before, uh, originally you might have had uh, the liturgy of the word celebrated separately from the liturgy of the Eucharist. So when they finally were joined together, for one reason or another, some of the things that took place at the end of the liturgy of the word uh, did not just start the liturgy of the Eucharist. Some of them floated into later on in the liturgy of the Eucharist. Uh, perhaps the, uh, the two most notable uh, uh, changes is where do you have the kiss of peace or the exchange of peace? Uh, in the Eastern churches, uh, you have it uh, before you have the formal beginning of the Eucharist. Uh, in the Roman church, you have it uh, after the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, so the, the exchange of peace goes all the way over there. In the East, it didn't go that far. But even in the Eastern liturgies, the exchange of peace takes place at different steps uh, before the, uh, the words of institution. Uh, the Byzantine takes place different from the, Mo uh, the Maronite and so forth. So, uh, as I say, we attribute that uh, confusion, if you want, that originally it was in a separate place and now where do you put it in the liturgy you had your hand up? yeah so do you know where the, the the exchange like what we do where does that come from the way we do it i'm going to make a comment about that in okay. a few minutes when i uh so the the uh so that's uh uh th that's a, a you know uh an interesting uh, development uh the uh, other uh very noticeable thing is the words of, uh, pardon me, the intercessions. If you remember, we said when they had the Liturgy of the Word separate from the Liturgy of the Eucharist, there were a number of intercessions before the people left. So now that you have the Liturgy of the Eucharist following immediately after the Liturgy of the Word, where do you put the intercessions? And here again, for example, in the Latin Church, they're right after the, the, the homily. Uh, if you go to the uh, Maronite church and a number of the other Eastern churches, they don't take place until after the uh, Epiclesis. In uh, Sharar, uh, they take place uh, before, uh, you know, the, uh, the actual Eucharistic uh, section begins. So, uh, again, uh, that's where you have the differences. Where do you put these practices? Where do they, where do they come in? Now, if you look at the next thing I mentioned here on page 40, the creed. Now, uh, please note, as I mentioned here at the, uh, the bottom of uh, page uh, 40, then to 41, the creed was not there at the beginning uh, in the liturgy. The creed came in afterwards. Uh, when I say after, I mean after the liturgy itself became gelled into a common practice. Uh, what I point out here is that on page 40 at the bottom, there was a well-known uh, patriarch, Peter the Fuller. I guess he was into dry cleaning. Uh, and uh, uh, he uh, was against the uh, Council of Chalcedon. So for him, he wanted to demote Chalcedon so he wanted to uplift Nicaea. <laughs> so he ordered in his patriarchate that the creed be, you know, chanted or recited at the Sunday liturgy. Uh, and then uh, it also drifted into the, the, the Byzantine liturgy. Uh, and as people point out that once the creed was in the liturgy, uh, it's very hard to take it back out. And so uh, that's how the creed became part of, of, of the 
uh, the, the liturgy itself. Uh, otherwise, the creed was done, of course, at baptism uh, and so forth. So, uh, so a heretic added the creed into the liturgy? And right. Was doing it? That's, that's <laughs> so <laughs> ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, you know, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a case of, you know, the law of uh, prayer becoming the law of faith or whatever. You know? but, uh, now, I do add here uh, on the top of page 41 uh, about the filioque. Uh, as you know, the filioque has had quite a history uh, in the church. Uh, it did not even become official in the Western church until you get to the um, 12th century, really. Uh, the, uh, you all know what I mean by filioque? Uh -huh. and some. Yeah. Uh, of course, the, the, it's a very controversial uh, addition to the creed, and of course, the, the Orthodox churches uh, do not have the filioque. Uh, for your information, as I mentioned here, for the Maronites, filioque comes into the creed uh, with the uh, second edition of the Maronite Missal. Pardon me, the first edition. The first edition of the Maronite Missal. So it was printed in Rome. There's the filioque. And uh, so if we want to know when the Maronites officially used the filioque, it's uh, something uh, somewhere around... Uh, you know, 1594 or something like that. Now, again, you have the approach to the altar of, of the uh, uh, of the of the celebrant. Uh, offertory procession. <clears throat> uh, what I mention here on page 41, and this is a citation from Theodore Mopsuestia. What happens in the offertory procession? The deacons bring out bread on the paten and wine in the chalice. Uh, other deacons spread linens on the altar. Uh, then the appointed deacons stand both sides and fan the uh, air above the oblation in order to protect it from insects. Yeah. Everyone is silent, praying quietly and watching what is being done. This is from uh, uh, the... Uh, Mopsuestia, and I mentioned here also in the Apostolic Constitutions. That should not surprise you. I mean, uh, that there would be insects. Why wouldn't there be? Uh, you know, there's no air conditioning, uh, the, uh, especially in the, in the summertime. Uh, and so uh, you want to keep the bugs away. And it, uh, so uh, you probably have the doors open of the church. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's why you need the fans. And uh, as you know, the fans again. I'm sorry here, somebody's invading us. Uh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I blame them for everything. The, uh, so anyway, the. Uh, as I say, the uh, the fans were originally a, uh, a utilitarian thing, that, but then they came, became an instrument in uh, the liturgy, uh, ceremonial. But in the Eastern churches, uh, most churches, uh, they still have the fans um, uh, as part of the uh, liturgical ceremony. It's funny, we, we had liturgy with the monks in Oregon one time, up at their at their monastery, but they didn't have a church yet because they just bought the property. So they said the liturgy outside, and they had that exact problem where there were just like, there were just yellow jackets swarming the chalice. I think they were using a really sweet. Wine. Well, as soon as you're going to have wine sitting out yeah. there, I mean, it, uh, um, even even in uh, even in our own churches, sometimes in the summertime, you know, the uh, insects are attracted to the wine. I mean, it's natural. Uh, so anyway, uh, the interesting thing is the next paragraph where I mentioned that uh, the theory is that originally uh, processions in the, in the Syriac church were done in silence. Uh, where, of course, in the uh, Byzantine, chants were added and so forth. Then I, then I cite here John Chrysostom talks about the curtain being drawn up. And he sees that as a symbolism of the heavenly 
the liturgy and the uh, earthly liturgy joining uh, choirs together. Uh, so he uses that as a, as a commentary. Uh, and uh, we also, as I mentioned here on 42, that that's even part of our own uh, liturgical prayer about the heavens being opened. Uh, I also note here that John Chrysostom uses the word awe, uh, the awful, the awesome. The, when, I, when I say awful here, I don't mean awful in the bad sense, but something full of awe. Uh, so this, this idea comes into, into play at, at an early time. Uh, now, one of the questions that has arisen, I think I mentioned before, is did the Maronites have a procession? The reason the question comes up is in the old missal, there was no rubric for a procession. Why? Because the gifts are already on the altar. But ironically, in the old missal, there is a processional hymn at this point. And so if you have a processional hymn, you should have had a procession. Uh, so, uh, but now, of course, uh, the, the idea of an offertory procession uh, has been introduced into the, the missiles that we use. Uh, so, uh, so here, of course, we have the procession, and the celebrant incenses the, uh, uh, the gifts and the altar and so forth. Uh, now, I point out on page 43 that uh, here again in the old missile, there was a diaconal litany uh, that uh, now is not there anymore. Uh, again, similar to the one that began the liturgy and similar to what you have in the Byzantine tradition. Uh, I also point out here on the first paragraph on page 43, there's a different role that the deacon in the Byzantine church has uh, from the Maronite church. In the, in the Byzantine church, the deacon is always telling the priest what to do, as if the priest doesn't remember. You know, uh, the uh, in the Maronite church, the deacon doesn't tell the priest anything. The deacon is in a secondary role, and he's always saying Baruch Mor, you know, with your permission, with your blessing. Uh, so uh, the the deacon role in a, in, a, uh, in the Byzantine church, the deacon role is quite more uh, pronounced uh, in the liturgy. Uh, now, uh, I also mentioned here in the next uh, paragraph that uh, uh, the deacon is offering uh, prayers, uh, petitions for the people. So now we move on to uh, the prayers of peace. Uh, the, one of the earliest traditions uh, in, the Mar in the Antiochian church is that there are three prayers of peace. Three prayers of peace. Uh, the uh, and I point out here that uh, uh, you have references to that fact uh, from different writers. Certainly, one of the prayers uh, uh, is the prayer of the veil. And here's a, a quotation from uh, James of Edessa. He says, "The fathers of Nicaea, after having ordered that the creed be said by all the faithful." In order to be sanctified in heart and lips, the, do the doors being then closed, we have the prayer of the mystic peace for the imposition of hands and for the uncovering of the altar. But as I mentioned here, there was no canon of Nicaea about that, but it came out of the uh, Council of Laodicea. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the first... Uh, reference to three prayers is there are three prayers one said in a low voice one in a second level voice and one in a loud voice I don't know how you do that but uh, that was the uh, original uh, idea what became the standard about these three prayers was the first prayer had to do with peace the second had to do with an imposition of hands and the third had to do with the veil. So, uh, so this is uh, this is how it became, uh, you know, understood. Uh, 
The interesting thing is the uh, anaphora of the 12 apostles, uh, they're, they're, it's three prayers, don't follow that form. They have two prayers of peace and one prayer of imposition and no prayer regarding the veil. Some people think that's another proof that it's the older anaphora uh, before things became standardized. Uh, now, uh, let me just go another five minutes and we'll stop. Uh, so the first prayer of peace is self-explanatory. Uh, and uh, the, uh, as I mentioned on the following uh, uh, page, you also have this uh, peace be with all of you. Uh, again, the question, as I said a few moments ago, is when do you have the exchange of peace? Certainly, according to the Antiochian tradition, the exchange of peace happens at this point. So it's after the uh, offertory and before you get into uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the actual words of institution and so forth. Uh, so, uh, so you have the first prayer of peace. Then you have the kiss of peace. And as I said, originally it was a kiss, but I point out here uh, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the clergy and the bishop kissed each other, the laymen kissed each other, and the laywomen kissed each other. Heaven forbid that that would be between a man and a woman. Uh, so, uh, Wait, so the men kissed each other and then the women kissed each other? Right. But the men never kissed the woman? Like right. Like they were married? No, 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 nothing. Yeah. Nothing makes them just kiss the feet. Because oh. the man, the woman was different. Yeah, originally too. Uh, That's right. Even in, in the old churches in Lebanon, the the men were sitting in the front part of the church and the women in the back part. Right. Is this the way we give peace right oh, now? Yeah. What does that come from? Well, okay. I I was gonna go for anyway. I'll, let me answer that question and then we'll stop. Uh, we'll continue next time. Uh, as far as the practice of the, uh, the hands, uh, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, the comment I would make is obviously uh, if you're going to show peace, you're going to show that, uh, you know, you're not threatening. That's why people shake hands, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, that you're showing you don't have a weapon. Uh, so, uh, so you come in peace. Namaste. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so I say, when when it shifted from kissing to the exchange of peace, okay. uh, you know, uh, I, I've never read anybody give any theory about that. I, I haven't seen anywhere where anybody talks about it. So anyway, uh, I don't want to go any further. You guys are getting tired. So next time we'll, we'll continue about the discussion of the prayer of peace. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.